This is Russia's newest nuclear-powered icebreaker, Yakushia. It is a step towards becoming what the country describes itself as the great Arctic power. As global warming melts the ice in the Arctic, the race to claim vast natural resources and new shipping routes in the north has intensified. For example, in 2017, a Russian oil tanker traveling from Norway to South Korea took just 19 days, which is 30% faster than the regular route through the Swiss Canal. Not just Russia, but the US, China and Canada are increasingly laying claims in this inhospitable region. So why are countries racing towards the Arctic? Traditionally, anything that falls above the 60 degree mark falls in the Arctic. Russia along with the US and six other countries are the Arctic states. For centuries, sailors have tried to find a northwest passage, a shorter and faster route between the Atlantic and the Pacific Oceans. Before the race to space and ocean depth began, there was the race to explore extreme landmasses. From frozen poles to its highest peak, Russia was obsessed with the Arctic. This led to many Soviet-era expeditions, of which some ended in disaster. The Arctic contributes to 25% of the Russian landmass and holds a large part of country's natural resources. Moreover, during the Cold War, the Arctic was the closest point between the US and the Soviet Union. Historically, thick ice and bad weather made navigation tougher. But over the last 20 years, the summer ice in the Arctic has shrunk by more than 20%. And the Arctic is warming at least twice as fast as the rest of the planet. But it's not just Russia. Canada has increased investment in Arctic patrol ships and deep water ports. Norway has expanded drilling operations in the Arctic Ocean and significantly boosted its military presence in the area. The US has began shifting its policy from scientific research to security and sovereignty in the region. But Russia is leading this race. Since 2007, Russia has built up its military presence in the region. It has started reopening Soviet-era military bases and investing in new Arctic-specific technologies. China, which calls itself a near-Arctic state, has been providing capital for Russian energy and infrastructure projects. But experts believe this increase in Arctic militarization by Russia and NATO countries might escalate into a future conflict.